Hello. So I thought I would take kind of a different approach to these videos where I'm talking about this um, plate of spaghetti that I'm working on. Uh, it needs a name too because it's really hard to explain I, and I it just needs a catchy name. Just a quick side note, I have named this thing. I'm gonna call it the Modular Melody Maker. Um, but uh, I'm gonna kind of treat these as like build logs. Um, and so I wanted to talk about what I've done so far here with our shelf of spaghetti. Uh, so we bre I breadboarded uh, the Pico um, and ran out of pins real quick. Uh, we've got these step switches and they take a digital pin for the input and they also take a pin for the LED. Each LED also needs a resistor. So there's a lot happening here. I staggered them to kind of imitate a piano keyboard look. So that's nice. Uh, then we got um, rotor encoder, which has not been implemented yet. Um, a I squared C screen. Uh, this is not the screen I originally wanted to use. There is a grayscale screen I want to use, um, but the one I had seemed to be borked. So there we are. And right now it's just kind of giving me data. Um, this is the DAC. This is the DAC. It's hanging precariously. What can I say? I'll explain why. Uh, and then we have the ADC. Uh, but the way things are wired up right now, it's technically not correct because I'm going to share uh, something that went a little, just a little wrong. Not like super wrong, but like a little wrong. When I first started um, working with this, I noticed that sometimes and of course it's not doing it now to recreate the scene of the crime, but uh, the ADC, it like wasn't reading values really well. It seemed to get be almost getting stuck when you'd get to like 4.3 volts. It could do lower voltages as you're seeing right now. Right now it's reading in um, just a, a LFO, just wow, 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 wow. sounds just like that, I promise. Uh, and you can see it's reading it. Uh, but I thought it was really strange. And then I realized that uh, when I originally breadboarded this with the uh, macro pad, I actually used a different ADC. I used this ADC, which is ADS 1015. Uh, and the one on the board here is ADS 1115, it has a higher resolution. Now they actually use the same library uh, in Circuit Python, but but you have to watch your import. You have to import the right one. So actually, right now, running on the Pico is the incorrect library for this ADC. Now uh, there's a couple things going on here though that are not good. First of all, we talked about how the ADC is not using the right thing. Yikes. Um, but the other thing is logic levels. Oh, logic levels. Um, so to get a full five octave range out of the DAC, it needs five volts. Um, but the Pico is a three volt logic board. Um, so, uh, but you can do, you know, you can't get the USB power five volts VBUS. Um, so what I originally did was I had these resistors on the, come on, I don't normally autofocus. I'm more of a manual focus kind of girl. Uh, but I had resistors on I squared C to bring the logic level to three volts. Um, so when I was doing that though, it was like, uh, uh, no, thank you. Um, so I was like, all right. Uh, so like it runs right now with the five volts, but uh, it's not it's not ideal. Really, the only thing that needs five volts is the DAC. Everything else would be fine with three volt logic. I'd probably give the ADC five volts just to like so that those are on the kind of the same plane. Uh, but right now, yeah. The other thing, um, these I squared C runs are ridiculous. That's bad. <laughs> Um, for those that don't know, the resolution of I squared C can be affected by long distance cable runs, and there's a lot happening here. It's in the spreadboard spaghetti. It's going to this unpowered multiplexer, which is going to a very long cable to here, which is then daisy chained to here. This one is off that. It's just there's so much going on. It, it's just not great. The reason why the DAC is over here and the ADC is over here is because I was trying to troubleshoot the terrible noises I was having from, uh, it was just heinous, it was bad. Um, I'll play it right here.
Wasn't that terrible? Yeah. So now um, I'm going to pause for a moment. I'm going to update the code to be using the correct ADC library. Uh, and I'm going to see if the terrible, no good, very bad noises come back, or maybe it's just magically fixed. Who's to say? So as a result with the logic thing, I want to add in a logic level shifter so that I can be using the proper three volts and have everything on three volt logic, but level out to five volts for the DAC and ADC. So everything's nice and proper. And uh, I can also get rid of that as like a possible issue for anything that's going on. Um, so there's that. I also do need to add in the GPIO expander because I am out of pins. I'm just out because actually when I press B here, I did not have enough pins for the LED. So I'm not sure if you can see. I'm using the LED on the Pico uh, to be able to show that it's on. Not ideal. Uh, but let me update the library. So it's using the right library and let me see if it's actually going to read the proper voltages on the screen. All right, so I just swapped in the ADC and I noticed I was still hovering really low on the voltage and which isn't supposed to be happening because actually right now I'm giving it like a full on gate. So it should be going up to five volts or at least 4.5. Um, so let me zoom in to the screen so you can see. Yeah, it's, it's hovering there. Um, if I take it out of PAMS and I like touch it, you can see it's like kind of reacting, but like not really. If I put it into this Turing machine, nothing's really happening. Um, if I bring up here, it's almost like being played like a keyboard. So what I'm gonna do now though, is I'm going to unground it and then I'm gonna see if the ADC reads because that's what was happening before. Sounds terrible, but the ADC is reading properly now. This is a terrible problem. And you can see, no one needs that in their life, including me. Um, you can see that it's reading the ADC voltages, okay? And it's showing what notes it should be tuned to with the DAC. But if I'm not grounded, then it's not tuned properly. If I ground, it doesn't read the voltages, but it sounds good. So that's kind of where I'm at right now, where like you can tell if I unground, you can tell in code it's working properly, but for some reason it's not doing the thing when it's grounded and I don't know why. So I decided to just, um, you know, change from doing VBUS to the three volt out because that makes sense. I don't know why I didn't think of that for testing instead of going straight to a logic level converter. We'll do that down the road. Uh, but um, as you can see now, using the three volt logic, it at least seems a little bit more stable in that we're getting like full three volts when grounded um, and not super low level. When I turn up the thing, it's not quite in tune. It's a, little it's a little shrill, it's a little shrill, and it's not changing enough. Um, so, however, I'm going to turn this down. When I unground it, look at that. And if I, you know, put in some notes, you can see it's like reading it properly, it's like quantizing it properly, and just so you experience it, I'm going to turn up the synth. Oh my god, it hurts. But just, like, you can tell it's, like, doing the right... Yeah, but then when I ground it... So what I think actually needs to be happening, I think the ADC may need its own ground. It may be need ground from a pin on the Pico. Maybe some of you are screaming at that at me right now. Um, who knows who's to say, uh, but I'm going to try that and see if that works. All right. Uh, so now I've plugged in the ADC so that it is not daisy chained with any of the other I squared C devices. Um, and it's on a separate ground pin. Um, 
And the reason why I did that is when I was searching the problem, like analog inputs acting weird with ground, it said like, um, you know, try it on its own pin. So that's why I'm doing that. I, I understand all the grounds are connected, but that's, yeah. So however, what I'm looking at here, the voltage is still staying at like one thing. When I undo ground, it's doing the right thing. What's confusing to me is, like I said, like I had this working with the macro pad, it was not acting like this. So I'm starting to wonder, you know, is it the Pico? Is it the fact that we're breadboarded like this? What is the deal? Um, because the same result occurs with the other ADC in the correct library I'll add. So I don't know. Um, but it's something with this setup that's causing problems, and I'm not sure what it is. Um, what gives me hope is that the, when it's just the DAC, I am getting nice tones of it, and I can see the logic's working, so it's, it's clearly a signal problem. I just don't know what problem it is. Um, I may hook back up the MacroPad project, and I still have the code, and see if it happens with that, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't. And the thing is the macro pad also uses an RP2040. So I just, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I know that the spaghetti is probably what the culprit is. Uh, and I acknowledge the spaghetti. I accept the spaghetti. Um, but I, I don't know how else to uh, really prototype this unless I should go directly to making little breakout PCBs, but I really don't want to do that without it getting working on a breadboard first. But it's it's strange. I should revert to the macro pad setup and see if it's the same behavior is occurring. So uh, as I said previously, um, you know, I got the macro pad out, I got the DAC out and the ADC out, uh, and I wired up just as it was previously uh, where it was working. And, um, you know, I would have almost appreciated it if it would not work. That would have made my life easier. Because now I, even though it was, it's doing what I expected it to do, I'm now more confused. Uh, so you can see on the screen, I can zoom in because I actually did critical focus. Good for me. Um, it's taking in voltages. I'm doing Turing machine output to here. The jacks are grounded as normal. Everything's fine here. Uh, we're using a Stemma cable, um, you know, and both of these boards have 10K uh, pull-ups, so um, it's not that with the Pico setup either. Yeah, so right now, nothing's set up. Let me go up an octave. I'm not saying this is musical right now, but I'm saying it's working, and it's not getting the weird ground buzz or anything, and you can see the voltages are changing as expected from the ADC. So, what does this mean? I don't know. Um, so it's something clearly with the wiring. So, because I've just proved that none of my components are borked. So, there's that. I've just proved it's not the code, because it's, it's working. So I don't know. I just don't know now. Um, let me zoom back out. Winnie doesn't know either. Winnie's real upset about it. She's heartbroken over it. So I think that's going to wrap it for this build, blog, blog, bog, pog, sog uh, thing. Um, I think what I'll do next in the next video, I'll troubleshoot it more. Uh, if people have ideas of what it could be, um, let me know in the comments. Again, as a woman on the internet doing technical things, I, I shudder a little at opening it up for debate in such a way, but you know, here I am. Um, and, you know, I'm thinking it's something with the wiring, or maybe it's something funky with the Pico. So I think my next troubleshooting steps are going to be um, maybe using a Feather RP2040 um, and wiring this up that way. And then maybe using one of the GPIO expanders and bringing in the buttons and seeing uh, with a Feather RP2040, seeing if that works. Then if that works, you know, maybe taking the buttons off the Pico and just doing this setup and maybe having like one button or something on the side to like actually be switching. Or maybe I could do it via command line. I don't know, but something. Um, basically just like 
What with troubleshooting, you want to kind of like try to take out as many variables as possible. And I fully admit and understand, accept and embrace that currently this setup has a lot of variables and that's why I'm not sure what's going on. Um, so my gut is telling me something with the wiring, but we're also going to check on the board too. Um, but I think that's going to do it for this video. Um, I mean, I, I have to say seeing the project work with this simple setup, which was the original, like prototyping kind of gives me like a little bit of a renewed hope of like, okay, this, this can work. It's just making sure the hardware is like communicating properly, which I, I think is something I can get working. So we'll pick it up from there. Um, yeah, uh, thank you for watching. And until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.